here we are. We're going to talk about getting getting through <laughs> your first job interview in ISD. <laughs> yeah, that made, I made one. it sound like you're crawling through the mud, through the mud. Well, you know. It feels that way to some people, and that's if why we're here. If you've ever done basic training, this is pretty much. <laughs> I mean, there's so many things that go into an interview, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you how to interview because that's silly. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to do resumes or any of the rest of it, but I think there's certain basic things in instructional design that most people are looking for that hire for these positions, and I want to try to take some of the mystery out of this, at least from my perspective, as someone who's hired many hundreds of designers and each company is different. They'll look for different things. They'll hire differently. They'll have different expectations. I'll ask you the trick question, you know, all the things that go into this. But I think there's some basic things about instructional design that you need to feel comfortable about. And if you do, you can talk your way through an interview. And Denise will have some good points too about things to think about as someone who is being interviewed just in general about authenticity and and don't try to swim above, above your level if you're not there. Oh, and, gosh, you know, just, no. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just little things like that. But in terms of instructional design, which is the alleged purpose of this channel, um, we're going to look at the things that I think an entry-level instructional designer should be able to know going into a, a Zoom or an in-person interview. And if you have some working knowledge of these things, I think you're going to be in good shape. Yeah, and you know, we know that the ISD field is a wide, vast field full of opportunities and just full of different pathways. There are so many different pathways. And so for me as an instructional design novice, just as a student, a graduate student in the program taking your adult learning class right now, you know, one of the things from a perspective of putting myself out there for my first ISD job, it can be very intimidating for somebody who is new to the field, who doesn't have this ginormous portfolio, or maybe even the vocabulary that you, f you feel you would need in an interview. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so trying to prepare for that kind of uh, an opportunity is it, it is, it can be overwhelming for people. So I think before we even start, if you were to speak right to that novice person, who is feeling that intimidation about even applying for their first ISD job because, oh gosh, I don't have enough experience. I don't have a portfolio that speaks the volumes that it should. What would you say to that person? Relax. <laughs> okay. Relax, Relax, people. Relax. Relax. It's all okay. And think about ISD just like you would any other professional field. Um, the thing that's different about ISD is people come to it from so many different directions. Most of us were subject matter experts or teachers or something else. And we decided that we wanted to get involved with this thing called ISD. And what you quickly learn as you get into this is it is so much behind the mirror here. The curtain pulls back and there's the wizard. And the wizard is 10,000 things you didn't even know were going on. And that has a tendency to intimidate people that are first getting into this. But there are some very basic things that if you have a good sense of these basics of instructional design, then you're going to be able to, to be able to, to get started. And things you want to think about, you have to know what behavioral objectives are. <laughs> you have to have a working knowledge of ADDIE, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. You have to be able to know that instructional design is a process. It's a systems approach. And they're very basic things like that. And the one thing that I ask everybody who interviewed for a, an intro instructional designer or someone who's going to do an internship, I ask them to write an objective. Just write me one objective on anything. And sometimes this would take a half hour. <laughs> Deer in headlights. Oh, gosh. Deer in headlights. write an objective. And the things that I would look for, do they have audience? Do they have behavior? Do they have condition? Do they have degree? Did they not use, and let me repeat, N-O-T, not use words like understand, which drives Uncle Chuck delirious. We, Did we, I anybody, use those words? Any, anyone who has ever had a class with... Dr. Chuck Hodel knows, don't use the word understand in the context don't of use, objectives. Don't use it. And anybody that's done instructional design will immediately pick up on stuff like that. So just know that you want to have actionable verbs. So things that you can observe and measure. 
when you write objectives. And the other important thing to think about this is you need to appreciate the fact that entry level ISD is not as difficult as what you will eventually get into. And many people in graduate school think they don't qualify to even put in an application for the jobs that they see listed because they'll see an undergrad degree in instructional design, which there are very few of anyway. They'll ask for graduate level instruction or a graduate degree or a PhD in instructional design. And let me assure you that a large percentage of those positions will not be filled by somebody with those qualifications. What you have to appreciate is that that's the ideal candidate and lots of organizations still write these for the ideal candidate. And that's fine. I don't have an opinion on that. But what you need to know is you're not going into a pool with people that have PhDs and ISD for an entry level position. It's just not the way it works. So what you should be able to do is think about this in terms of, of relative strengths. So like I said, you want to know objectives, you want to know Addy, you want to know this system, you want to know some other things that are just basic information. If you've taken a course with ATD or you've worked at some level in an academic course of instructional design, you have some basics there. And you can appreciate the fact that you have to look at mastery. You have to think about evaluation, whether you use Kirkpatrick's model, whether you use my NOP analysis or any of the things that you might want to do. Just remember that you have to do these things. Instructional design is about this system. So know your populations, know your content, know the things that you want to be able to have them demonstrate at the end of a course. And if you can talk about those things, even in general terms, you're going to be ahead of the game. But what you don't want to do, and I've seen this time after time, especially with subject matter experts for some reason, they come in and try to bluff their way through with all their technical experience. And I can assure you that means nothing in terms of instructional design, except in very vertical positions where they want you to be the subject matter expert and the designer. And those do exist. And if that's the case, that's different. But don't take your, your past experience in something else and think that it always relates directly to what you'll do in instructional design. This is a vertical content area. This is a vertical set of skills. And you need to be comfortable with that. But just the basics will get you someone's attention in this hiring process.